functioning dysfunction that you have learned to survive no, in. Because I use my yes. tools to, because first of all, let's, let's, you're mm. acting as if I'm entering every scenario with the full me. And, and we That's all, right, every Nick. time someone meets someone, you're right. meeting their representative. I know how to turn on the perfect man. Yeah, and so, mm. therefore, I may have manipulated a situation. Right. And therefore, so. It hey guys, welcome to Dark Arts Podcast. This is where we explain to you guys, I guess, the manipulation, um, the skills, um, and the seduction that happens in the dating field. Look, Nick Cannon is an expert seducer expert seducer because he knows exactly what he's doing and he knows exactly what he's bringing to the table let me tell you what he's doing if you ever read the book of uh, robert green by the art uh, called the art of seduction there are i think eight types of seduction seduction uh, nine actually by eight because one of them doesn't include a man which is the siren what nick cannon is is the ideal lover what you're hearing him explain is that i Deal lover. And what Robert Greene says is that with the ideal lover, what they are uh, focused on is that they focus on the target, they assess you, they listen, and they pay attention, and then they provide the very thing that you are wishing for and you're wanting. They, they fulfill your desires by listening, taking time, observing you, hearing you, and then they uh, uh, attack, right? And so what Nick Cannon is explaining here is that, listen, my good sis, you may be saying that the women are low functioning or low value, but th don't say that because that's my kill. Why Nick Cannon is actually pressed in this moment has nothing to do with him being low functioning. No, 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 no. What he's talking about is saying this, do you know how much function it takes to think the way I think to be able to seduce these women? Because what she, what he's actually offended by, and I'll do another video about this, is actually about Dr. Uh, Cheyenne Bryant talking about how the women that he seduces are low functioning, meaning they're easy to get almost in a sense, right? That's the way he's associating it. So what he's really saying is this, imagine I'm a hunter hunting antelope, and you tell me it's easy to kill antelope. What you're really saying is my skills as a hunter is not great. But what he's saying is, do you know how much time and effort I have to put into seducing women? Do you know what I have to do to get them to a place that they are? Do you know what? Do you know how I provide an arena so they feel comfortable and feel special in my presence before I go for the kill? Oh, no, no, don't don't talk about the, the women like that, because you're actually discrediting the work that I put into hunting. Hence why he called it predatory and manipulative, because he, he's working at actually doing that. He actually works at seducing women. And that's what the ideal lover does. They work to seduce. They don't they're not naturally gifted in that sense, but they they learn those skills by spending time with women, spending time in their presence, spending time getting to know them, spending time um, trying to understand them, and then they release their uh, their madness onto you. So let's listen a bit more. We're going to break it down. But before we do, make sure you like, share, subscribe, click on that bell button for notification uploads as well. Let's go. It's to not discredit to anyone yeah, else. Yeah, I got you. I've come into every situation. I can be God-fearing, celibate, the one that you want. I can tell you everything that you want in a man and show you that. I can right. open the doors, lay down the cloak, send the jet, mm -hmm. do it all mm -hmm. to be like, oh, my mm -hmm. goodness. No, but, I've but, never. And now, pause it right there. What did he just say to you? What did he just say? He just said, listen, I could be the God-fearing man. I could be this man. I could be that man. I could be that man. I can do this, this, and this. What he says is this. I can be whatever you want me to be, which is what Robert Greene actually spoke about in The Ideal Lover. The Ideal Lover is all about making sure that you listen, make sure you get to know what the, what what the, what gets the person ticking, um, and then making sure that you are uh, unpredictable, mysterious, and make the target feel special. And part of and you know I really do understand it because a lot of the time I spent in you know Egypt doing what I was doing, you actually it's, it's it for me it was more natural in the sense of because of my trauma, I and the work that I do where I interview people, I had been interviewing people for the last four years. I learned how to do what we call spotlighting, which is you put a spotlight on someone else and you ask them questions about themselves. Now, Robert Greene talks about this, saying that people are narcissistic. They want to know they want to know that they're special and they want to talk about themselves. So what I learned to do, not as a to try and seduce women, but as a seducing of when I'm doing interviews was to spotlight the person. Don't worry about me. I want to know more about you. I'm intrigued by you. I'm interested by you. And by doing that, people started talking. And then I realized this is also a seduction technique that happens in a dating field. I learned that by listening, just spending time, you know, creating a, 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 oh, okay, I didn't know that about you. Why do you actually feel that way? By almost playing a therapist, almost in a relationship aspect, you can seduce someone, which is why therapists end up seducing people, not on purpose, but because of uh, what we call transference. People send, end up finding their, <laughs> their therapist attractive. And it's simply because they are doing something which is entering their spirit by continually asking questions about who they actually are.
and getting to know them, which is what a lot of human beings have lacked from childhood. Many of us have not had parents who are or friends or family who have spent time dedicated to finding out who you actually are because you believe you are a complicated individual who's had lots of life experiences and nobody's asking you about your life until somebody shows you. And so it becomes seductive. So what he's saying is, as I learn about those people, I, I, I be whatever you want me to be. Now, how can he be whatever you want him to be, except he understands who you want him to be, which means he has to listen and he has to, you have to talk and tell him what you want. Now, remember, obviously, Nick Cannon's got a little bit of an advantage here. He's Nick Cannon. He's not a normal person, which means he's going to combine two styles of seduction, which is number one. The other one is the star. The star is the one that intrigues the target by being a real yet being mysterious, represents escapism, fantasy, and dream. Nick Cannon, the women that he chooses are going to be of a lower value, right? And so, of course, you've got Mariah Carey um, in that sense, and that's a different conversation in, in general. But the women that he's been impregnating after Mariah Carey have been normal women, right? They're not necessarily of the same value or um, same uh, um, notorious, notorious, notoriousness as he is, right? Like, he's taking flights to go and see this child and go and see that child. Like, just, that's not normal. And so he creates this ethereal ethereal uh, uh, um, aura around himself, right? Almost like a godlike kind of aura that he can do anything he wants. He's free to do whatever. And that is a, a seduction aspect, too, because a person feels like if they're with Nick Cannon, they can be free as well. And so combining the star and the ideal lover, two types of, uh, of attraction here, what he's going to do is that he's going to become whatever you want him to become once he starts speaking. And now what the crazy thing is this, you're probably going to look at Nick Cannon and be like, I bet he's like this, I bet he's like that as a woman, right? But then when you speak to him, he's like, actually, he's really kind, he's actually caring. Right, there's a different side to Nick Cannon that I never saw. And what woman, the one thing that will seduce a woman is thinking that she sees a different side to what another to another woman sees. The, the one thing about women that seduces them, that seduces themselves is thinking that, do you know what? Because I'm there, I, he shows me a different side. How many times do you hear women saying they want to change a man or think that, that, that them being there, they're going to change him? Like, how many baby mothers has he got? Okay, let's play a little more. Nick, toxic Nick but shows look, no, up look at and you like, did, this but, motherfucker got me. No, but you gave me the perfect. draws and I ain't heard from him what in three mean, weeks. What you said is perfect. No, what you said... So did you hear what he said? He's very proud of his hunting. What he's trying to let her know is, listen, you're thinking that these women are not, you're thinking these women are not great. You think these women are not, they're not um, smart. You think these women are easy. And what, he, and what he's actually offended by is you are downgrading the work and the effort I have to put in to get these women, right? By you saying that they are low functioning, you're actually really saying that my work ain't on point, but my work is on point. Do you know what I have to do to get to these women? So as he's letting her know, listen, then th these women are actually genuinely fooled. See, so what, what he's actually advocating for right now is to say, hey, I want to let you know that these women are genuinely fooled by what I've done because, of course, I created a mask. And my, and my acting is so great and so amazing. Of course, you're going to fall for it. You're not going to realize. And what she's saying is making him feel like you're discrediting the work that I put in. You're discrediting the, the acting that I'm doing. You're telling me my acting is not real enough. That's what you're really saying. That is perfect because you named all of the low functioning, superficial things that a low functioning woman would fall into. Church, women, that baby, ain't low functioning. Baby, any woman, <laughs> any, woman any woman or man. So what? So what? what's happening here is what he's saying is, look, church is not low functioning. What he's really saying is, do you know how hard it is to play church? Do you know how hard it is to get a church girl? But in reality to the situation, she's also right. Because like I said in the first video, the reason why people are getting seduced is because their authenticity of themselves. See, the one that's going to seduce me is going to be an era of my own weakness, right? Which is, I think, usually um, a woman that is overly seductive is going to be uh, the siren. The, but the siren gets everybody. For me, the siren's going to get me. You know what I mean? It might, I know my weakness. My weakness is a siren and the coquette. The coquette and the siren, they get me. Because the coquette plays are hot and cold. And because of my mind always wants to understand why people do what they do, the coquette especially plays hot and cold. They, they One minute they're good, the next minute they're not so good. So the coquette always gets me. Because I'm always trying to understand them. So if, if I'm going to be seduced, it's by a coquette. But now I know that, I have to be aware of that. You know what I'm saying to you? But reality of the situation is we all have our weaknesses and we're all able to be seduced by something. And so what, he, what, what, what Dr. Brian is kind of alluding to here is saying that they are low functioning. But he's saying it's not low functioning. I'm seducing them. So they're both kind of right here because actually if the women were, if the women were being authentic, as a, for instance, a church girl, the reason why church girls get, 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 get seduced by someone like Nick Cannon is simply because they're not authentically being real with themselves when it comes to their faith. 
They don't really know Jesus like that. If he did, Jesus would be snitching on Nick Cannon. Yeah? So that's the reality of the situation. But at the same time, he's also right. These are not low-bred women. No, his seduction is just really powerful. All right? So both of these are right. They're not necessarily wrong. Any person, who has, any person who's done the work, who gained a sense of self, who's worked on their pain pockets, who's worked on their trauma, they're still going to be vulnerable. Who, they're going to be vulnerable. They're they're gonna still be vulnerable. Gonna, and late at night when you're imperfect. sleeping alone, you go, no. I would. And what he's talking about is exposing the vulnerability that everybody has a vulnerability. And he's right and she's right, right? Because if the girl has done the work and healed herself, what she's going to do is deny her pain or deny her longing for something to say, this is not going to benefit me long term. She's actually right in the long term. But he's also right that he can seduce a lot of those women, even if they've done the work, because if they, they he only needs um, he only needs one moment. So the reality is this: Satan only needs a moment. That's why the Bible says that we should submit to God and then resist the devil, and he shall flee. The Bible says we're not ignorant of his devices. The reason why we fall into temptation and sin is because we. The Bible says in James one that it's not that it's not the tempter that's the issue. The issue is it's within you. So you are tempted because there is a desire in you, a thought in you that you begin to allow to dictate and it pulls you towards the temptation. So it is, they are both right again. He just needs to find the right moment to get you. But she's also right. It will never happen if you don't put yourself in that position. If you don't let Nick Cannon have any time around you, it ain't going to happen. Right. But like I said, the ideal lover is trying to listen, understand. He's going to pretend like, you know what, I'm trying to learn more about God. You know, I'm trying to understand more. But really, truly, he has uh, uh, something on his mind. You know what I'm saying to you? It is what it is. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Click on that bell button for notification of uploads. Let me know your thoughts about dark arts, man. It's crazy in the dunya.